beloved people. What a blessed opportunity to come to you again. I am reading right away from the book of Mark. Mark chapter 15, verses 37 and 38, he says the following. We could even start earlier. We can start even 33. At noon, darkness came over the whole land, the whole earth. And there, in the afternoon, at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and at 3 in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabach ani, lama sabach ani, meaning, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why have you forsaken me? And uh, verse 35, he says, when some of those standing there heard this, they said, listen, he is calling Elijah. So, when some of those standing near there heard, they said, listen, he is calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on his staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now, leave him alone. Let us see if Elijah comes to take him down in other words, to help him, he said. Verse 37 and 38 is our target. That is what we aim at, beloved people. And he says, with a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the other versions say, when he had cried a second time, in a loud voice, he cried a second time. Then the curtain of the temple ruptured. And we know very well that the inner holy of holies of the temple was where the presence of the Spirit of the Lord was. So, having read that introductory scripture, beloved people, I want to talk to you about a very, very important help, a very, very important aspect a very important uh, helper that the Lord has sent the church at this hour. And uh, in other words, you could say the heading of my conversation today is overcoming today's spiritual assault. Overcoming today's spiritual decay. Overcoming today's spiritual attacks. <laughs> Whichever way you want to put it. That will be the heading now of my talk. But you see very clearly that in this sermon, the first scripture we have read speaks about a travail, speaks about the commissioning, speaks about the breaking, rupturing for R-U-P, to tear, the tearing of the veil. When he cried a second time, then he gave up his spirit. And then the curtain that separated the church, separated the world, separated man from God, from the presence of God, was broken, was ruptured from top to bottom. And that gave man the unprecedented access to um, the presence of God, the Spirit of the Lord. And so today, the title is Overcoming Today's spiritual attack, spiritual assault, which is going to be very important. And in this conversation, how does the church, in this very challenging time, at this time we all agree that the challenges to surmount as a Christian have increased. We all agree that there is left and right assault of the enemy, environmental insults, as we so will. How does the church overcome this? 
how do you overcome today's spiritual attacks at work? Some of you that are in your offices, sometimes it's a lot of attack. It is a woman that has dressed very badly on that day, and that is an assault from the devil. Hmm? And she's walking towards you, she's walking away from you, she's assaulting you. You see the enemy is assaulting you essentially. Or it's a man, You maybe you're a lady and it's a man that is, you know, looking at you that day as if laughing at you, assaulting you. So all this is happening in the workplace, corruption, you know, many other vices of sin huh, are taking place. So how does one then overcome them? So I want to begin with our lead scripture now in the book of Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 to 4. Now, Second Thessalonians, our lead scripture, chapter 2, I'm reading verses 3 to 4 as beginning scriptures. And it says, Second Thessalonians 2, 3 to 4, it says, Do not let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness has been revealed. Again, I repeat this. Do not let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not occur, will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed. This is amazing, beloved people, because there was a tremendous conversation between the Lord and the church when he now, for me already, he has revealed to me who he is and uh, in terms of uh, in the spirit. I've met them. He has challenged me with them, both the false prophet and him, Antichrist. But, you know, look at what the scripture says, his revelation to the world. And it's also amazing that uh, when you look at the way the beast, I gave you this this uh, this tremendous vision of the Lord, when now the dragon calls him out of the sea, and he comes out of the sea. And then you see what happened in Akuru, when the Lord also lowered his envoys, his fighters, his battalion from heaven, while the Lord showed me the dragon calling him out of the sea. So you can tell that the battle groups have been formed, you know. They are now on site. But anyhow, he says, Do not let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until rebellion occurs. The rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed. The one doomed to destruction, and that destruction we know too well is in the book of Revelation chapter 19, when he says, verse 20, but the beast was captured, and with it the false prophet who had performed signs on his behalf, on its behalf. With these signs he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. The two of them were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. And then all the others also were killed that had followed them. So you see, that destruction we know when the Messiah comes back to Jerusalem. But right now, before the Messiah comes to take the church, how do you overcome the spiritual assaults in your workplaces, in many places, wheresoever you may find yourself? Verse 4, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 says, he will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God and is worshipped so that he sets up himself. He sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. So you see the opposition, that he will oppose the worshipping of the Messiah, he will oppose the worshipping of Jehovah. He will come to defile the worshipping of the Lord. So that, that's a very powerful thing that is happening. And then he will say something here as we continue verses 6 to 7 now, Second Thessalonians chapter 2. He says, And now you know what is holding him back, so that he may not be revealed, again, except at the proper time. Can I read now this again, NIV? He says, And now you know what is holding him back, so that he may be revealed at the proper time. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work in your workplaces. I've just mentioned that. Anything that opposes the Lord, anything that's anti-Christ, anything that opposes the righteousness of the saints, the holiness of the saints, the salvation of the saints, the holy decrees, the vows you made when you received the Lord. Like I gave examples in your workplace. A woman has dressed very badly on that day, and she's assaulting you, essentially. She's always coming to your desk. She's walking. 
walking away from you and she's addressed the situation very badly, or a man, or whatever the case, or corruption, whatever be the case. So he says here in verse 7, For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now holds it back, holds it back, will continue to do so till he is taken away, taken out of the way, and then the lawless one will be revealed, verse 8. The one whom the Lord will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. So you see, beloved people, he says, while the revelation of the person of the Antichrist is not yet to the world. I know for me the Lord is showing me so much on the ground here in the spiritual context, in the visitations going. And I know so much that I don't share with you, even yesterday the conversation when he showed me the Antichrist and the false prophet. However, he's saying the official inauguration of them to the world will only take place when he that holds them back, he that stands in the way, holds them back, is taken out of the way, then they will come. Then they will be revealed to the world. But he's saying, nonetheless, that notwithstanding, that already the power, the spiritual context, of the power of opposition to worship, opposition to the Lord, is already at play. That's why I give examples that you are what places. And so how do you overcome these beloved people? Now, from the scripture I have read, you see that there is powerful, blessed hope that the Lord has given the church so much power now to overcome the spiritual assaults, today's spiritual contest, today's spiritual fight, attacks in your workplaces and whatsoever you do, wherever, wheresoever you execute your lives from. And so he's saying that we have been given power. The church has been given a restrainer, a restrainer, that the church has been given a restrainer. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 6, he says, and now you know what is holding him back, so that he may be revealed only at the proper time. There is a restrainer that can help you to surmount that spiritual contest that's going on at your workplace between the forces of darkness assaulting the purity of the salvation you received, the righteousness of your decree, the righteousness of your vows, they are tough. And he says, this restrainer, he refers to him as what, what, meaning like an object. Again, I read uh, verse 6, he says, Second Thessalonians chapter 2. And now you know what is holding him back. He calls him what. Hmm? And now you know what is holding him back so that he, then he uses he. He says, what is holding him back, he addresses him as what. And then, again, he refers to him as he, meaning masculine. He's also male. And considering that this letter was being written to the church by the Holy Spirit, to the church in Thessaloniki, in Thessalonia, that part of Greece, being written to the church at that time, the primitive church. And now you are the church. We are the church of this dispensation. When the Messiah is about to come and take the church. And this letter is written to the primitive church. He's saying, he refers to him, now you know what, as an object. What is holding him back? There is a restrainer that can help you, beloved people. In whatsoever the contest may be. That fight in the workplace. The assaults, the, the spiritual assaults that you go through every day. You can overcome them. Our title today is Overcoming Today's spiritual attack, assault, insult. And I'm introducing you to a restrainer because it says, and now you know, and now you know what is holding him back. He addresses him as an object. What? As an it. And also, he refers to that restrainer as he. And now you know what is holding him back so that he may be revealed at the proper time, you know. And then he says, again, verse 6, And now you know what is holding him back, so that he may be revealed at the proper
proper time for the ticket powers and so forth. And then he says, until he's removed out of the way, he's taken, he says, will not come, he says, hold him back to continue doing so till he, he is taken out of the way. He also addresses him as he, masculine, male. And this conversation was happening between the Holy Spirit, between the Lord of hosts, and the primitive church in Thessaloniki, in Thessalonia. That means, that restrainer that will help you today, that I'm trying to introduce to you today, I'm introducing to the church today, that will help you overcome the spiritual assault, he must have existed in the primitive church since this letter was written by the Holy Spirit. Because he's introducing him, he's talking about him. All that time, the primitive church, when the Holy Spirit was talking to the church in Thessalonia, he must have existed because he was talking to them about that restrainer. And because the church of Christ has not yet been taken away into the rapture, though the stairs have now been lowered, which means the rapture is going to take place, is finally going to take place, but because the church has not yet been gathered up into glory, into the kingdom of glory, has not yet walked the glorious tale that I prophesied and came into being on March 11, 2018, having prophesied it January 15, 2017, about three months or so. That means this restrainer still exists even today in the world. Even today. Wow. So that means ever since then, the inauguration of the church, until now, this restrainer is still here. That's why the person of the Antichrist has not yet been revealed to the world. That means this restrainer has been around and is still in the world today. Why? Because the church has not yet been taken. And so you can still tap on him to overcome today's spiritual assaults. And he says, in that conversation, now you begin to understand that if this restrainer has held back the Antichrist from being revealed, holding him back until today, then that is an amazing restrainer. He must have been number one. He must be a very powerful restrainer that has held him back for more than 2,000 years. That is very powerful. And then number two, he must have been very successful and excellent and effective in holding him back. He must be very excellent in that work of holding back the man of lawlessness, the wicked man, the Antichrist, that he can hold him back from all those years when the church just began until today, more than 2,000 years. Excellent. He must be so excellent in holding him back. He must be very effective, really, in holding him back. For him to have held him back all that time, he must be really, he must be very effective. Uh, number three, he must be very successful then. He has really held him back successfully until today. The Antichrist is not yet revealed. He must be so powerful to hold him back across the entire world. Which means, he has restrained and blocked the dominion of darkness, the dominion of Satan, the power of Satan for over 2,000 years. That is very powerful, beloved people. Who is this restrainer then? He says, since the primitive church, until now, he's held him back. He's essentially held back the dominion of the satanic power, the dominion of satanic darkness, the dominion of darkness, the dominion of wickedness. He has held back that kingdom from being revealed. He must be so powerful, beloved people, to be able to block him and restrain that dominion of darkness for over 2,000 years and all over the world, not just in one place, throughout the entire earth, throughout the entire universe. The Antichrist has not been revealed in the sun has not been revealed in the moon, has not been revealed in Jupiter. So in the entire universe, not just the earth, he has held him back for 2,000 years plus. How powerful. That means he really must be having sufficient power to suppress the dark world, the darkness over this world. He has suppressed him, beloved people. And when we see the manifestation of the person 
of the Holy Spirit. He comes as a dove, so you could say it. He has come to me as a dove. He speaks to me as a dove, sometimes as a dove, and all the person of the Holy Spirit. And those of you that have been around the meetings lately, then you have seen his manifestation as a person. Only the Holy Spirit, beloved people, is best suited to describe this restrainer, to sweet, to fit this restrainer that is described here in this scripture of Second Thessalonians chapter 2, beloved people, verses 3 all the way to 7 and 8. Because only the Holy Spirit appears as a dog, so you can watch or eat, or you can address him as what or eat, or appears as a man, so you can address as he, masculine, male. This is your help, beloved people. And I want the believers all over the world to understand this so-called rampant attack going on over the church, over the life of the believers, is totally uncalled for. Because I've just described to you here the power of the restrainer who is even available to the church. So why the apostasy then? Only the mighty Holy Spirit, my one and only friend, the mighty Holy Spirit of the Lord is currently charged with preparing the perfect bride of Christ. Only he can fit this description. And that means the role that I've read here in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 all the way to verse 8, that role requires that he fight evil and he fight wickedness. Only the Holy Spirit can fit his beloved people. And he's available to you. This power is available to you. How powerful. How awesome. And yet we know that when the rapture of the church does take place, the mighty Holy Spirit of the Lord will be taken out of the way, removed, taken out of the way. And then the man of sin, the Antichrist, the man of lawlessness, the man of sin, the man of wickedness will be now revealed. Why? Because the habitation of the Holy Spirit will have been taken away, the church raptured, and the dispensation of the grace will have ended. And now, all of you that have been in the meetings, even those coming to Europe, you have known that the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, will now be assigned to the two witnesses of God because of the monumental battle. Some of you have seen the presence in the meetings where he is, when he comes and stands as a man there. Beloved people, overcoming today's spiritual souls, you need to depend Depend on the Holy Spirit. The Messiah is coming. Only he is charged with fighting wickedness. Only he has enough power to hold back the power of darkness, the dominion of darkness, the Antichrist from the beginning of the church more than 2,000 years ago until now on the planet Earth, on Jupiter, on Cygni, on the sun, on the moon. Universally, he has held back darkness. He has real power. May the Lord bless you, Shalom. Depend on Him, beloved. So, Shalom, Shalom, Haverim.